and Tinubu have left uh, the shores of Nigeria, not because he's sick, because of the he's, he's, he has been troubled by the level of uh, what is happening. You see, he wouldn't want to die of a heart attack because he understood that he also is, was part of the failure. He contributed to the failure of the system. And by now, I believe he must be regretting his actions. You can understand what is actually happening. You see, it beats my imagination to, of course, and leave me with no doubts that there is a conspiracy of silence. There is a conspiracy within people within the corridor of power, abetting, adding, and of course, sponsoring the jihad or Islamic uh, radicals to overrun the entire Nigerian state. So of which he could not be absolved of such complicity is very unfortunate. And that, of course, have left so many people deserted and so many communities are now scoring for safety. And uh, in fact, the communal life has been disrupted. School system in the northern region has been abolished, which are uh, one of the proposals of these uh, Islamic uh, apologies. It's very unfortunate. So, but then you think the rate of insecurity in the East, the killings, the attacks, don't you think it has been reduced to any point? The do's in what sense? Unfortunately, the uh, media is underreporting the level of calamity or uh, atrocity that is going on. The media has been clamped down, the media has been squeezed, squeezed for reporting life uh, incidents and it's very unfortunate. So it has not in any way reduced. Rather, it, is, it has gotten out of hand. Uh, probably the next one may be, they will tell us that Asorok has been uh, attacked and uh, probably the, whatever you call it, the poster or the uh, suppose the president has been adopted. I think that will mark the end or the climax of the system. Okay, um, thank you very much for that. Um, looking at these bandits, or rather terrorists, um, the fact that they were able to get into the, um, the NDA, what's your thought on this? Yes, it wouldn't have been possible for an external body to invade that uh, facility because as I exactly said, it represents the the, sim, uh, the symbol of nationality. In fact, apart from, uh, in fact, that is the headquarter, first headquarter per se, because that is where you see what Nigeria is made up of. It's unfortunate. How could they have beat the security checks to the point they succeeded finding their way through the it's a large facility i mean if you have been there before you understand what it is not possible for an external body to who has no link with the insiders to invest such a facility such system is 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 impossible so there are insiders who are briefing them or giving them information and uh, it's very unfortunate. How could, does it mean that there are no guides, there are no security men on guides? You see, how could you expect people with a free mind to accept such? So there is more to it of which we have not been briefed. And uh, unfortunately in Nigeria, they will, as much as it's, it's not against their political interests, they will sweep it under the carpet because it is irrespective of whose uh, house is called because it doesn't affect them. Once it doesn't affect them, it doesn't 
uh, endanger their interests, well, that is good to go. That's why a sitting president who should have been thrown into a morning state, who should have declared public holiday or a morning day for those uh, hierarchy officers who lost their life to mere banditry, as they claim, you see, ended up saying that that would boost the morale of the military. In what sense? In what sense? In what respect? You can imagine the the, 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 the understanding of the supposed first citizen of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Who lost, if not over four uh, military personnel? And it was a throwing party that uh, that would be a booster to their morale, which of course the military has lost. They, has, they have been psychologically defeated. Traumatized. Most of them are tendering resignation, leaving the Nigerian force because it's as if they were sent there to as a like, sacrificial lamb. If it, if the university, the only university of uh, Nigerian force or the military, could be invaded, then what is is it the secondary school or whatever? So you can see that uh, unfortunately. We are in for the unimaginable. So with this, um, you, you don't think the um, security problem of Nigeria have in any way been solved, half solved or gotten better? It is those within the corridor of power. I, I mean the dispensation, this current dispensation of Muhammad Buhari is the architect of the problem, of the crisis. You see, there are several insinuations. Of course, before he assumed office, in 2015, after the election, he, he made category, he made a, a, a public statement that he is going to make Nigeria ungovernable for President Jonathan. Unfortunately, he, of course, directly or indirectly, stole the mandates of the people. And of course, what he has wished others has to come back to him. The people, the machineries he has hired, mobilized to disrupt the government of Jonathan could not find any other place because they have been bought over to kill, to destroy. He also said categorically that the baboos and the monkeys will be soaked in the blood. Unfortunately, Jonathan applied wisdom and relinquished power even when he understood that uh, he was rigged out. He admitted the defeat, he conceded to that and uh, uh, it becomes a history. So Buhari was not prepared to govern. He wasn't prepared to govern, but he was prepared to make, to be mischievous, to make the Nigerian state ungovernable to throw this entire region under chaos and they unfortunately inherited this uh, first state, which of course it should be held responsible. Now Jonathan has been exonerated and uh, all the deceptive propagandas, <coughs> excuse me, sponsored uh, by medias and all that and his uh, co-sponsors or co-spirators. Where are they today? Antinubu have left uh, the shores of Nigeria. Not because he's sick, because of the... He's, he's, he has been troubled by the level of uh, what is happening. You see, he wouldn't want to die of a heart attack because he understood that he also is, was part of the failure. He contributed to the failure of the system. And by now, I believe he must be regretting his actions. He must be regretting, of course, for, in the first place, supporting uh, a bygone, somebody who has no interest in building nationhood. So how do you expect things to work out? How do you expect uh, normalcy to return to the Northeast?
he made a promise under six months that, of course, he would decimate Boko Haram. But what has happened? Boko Haram has become a monster, a formidable uh, Islamic movement, which, of course, have access to funds, have access to sophisticated weapons, armories, which can dislodge the entire military architecture of Nigerian system. That's why, even to today, as Gumi has claimed that in 20, even in 20 years, you cannot, you cannot uh, uh, destroy Boko Haram. And uh, it was released by the Attorney General or Jarab Usaiba that in this of this dispensation that there are over 400 sponsors of Boko Haram, people that were indicted, but yet it was not released to the public domain. They have not been summoned or called to book. DSS have not queried people if they, they have not done that. So why is the need of, of course, letting the people know that uh, we have gotten the list, the people who are sponsors to this uh, heinous crime that have disrupted the entire system that have, in fact, Nigeria has collapsed under the watch of General Muhammad Buhari. It's very unfortunate. Okay, let's look at the fact that um, the barrister, IPOB lawyer, barrister IJ4. The legal counsel. Yes, okay. Uh, he explained the way they were treated by DSS when they wanted to visit, when they wanted to visit, or rather he wanted to visit the um, leader of the IPOB, that's Mazinam Dikano. The fact that they were told to pull up their shoes and all of that. What's your view as regards that treatment? It's, it's, of, it's very unfortunate that uh, with, uh, they were subjected to such uh, inhuman treatment. For crying loud, they are exercising their legitimate duty uh, as a legal counsel to uh, the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra. The person of His Excellency has been addressed, Mazin Namdekanu. So I think uh, that shouldn't have happened in the first place. It's very unfortunate. Why should the government and the instruments of the state continue to violate, continue to subjugate the, 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 the supposed citizens, you see, in such a, a dehumanizing uh, level? Treatment method on lawyers, not just ordinary lawyers for crying loud. Even though they are ordinary lawyers, doesn't they deserve some respect for crying loud? These are citizens, these are not criminals. Why should they be subjected to such inhuman, dehumanizing uh, uh, treatment? It's very unfortunate. All in the name of, of course, intimidating them. You see, I'm frustrating their efforts or trying to, of course, uh, subjugate them or make them give up whatever position they may be holding or they may have in respect to, in defense of their own clients. For crying loud, they, their action was backed up by the courts. The court gave them that warrant or that uh, opportunity or how whatever the legal term used to be able to assess their client. So why should they be treated as if uh, they are hoodlums? These are responsible gentlemen and uh, learned fellows. It's very unfortunate. So that is why what we are saying in this system is a system that has no respect for the fundamental rights of the people. The right to association and fair hearing. You see, how do you expect, of course, Mazen Nandikano to get justice if his legal counsels could be subjected to such a psychological and mental torture? It's very unfortunate. Then what happens to Nandikano who is under the detention, under the dungeon of uh, the DSS? You see, the un unimaginable is really happening. But that notwithstanding, of course, people, they have the right 
to fair hearing, they have the right to justice, to uh, fairness or fair trial, irrespective of the intimidation coming from the, the states. It's very unfortunate. If such people could be subjected to such level of uh, assault, dehumanizing uh, treatment, then what happens to this uh, average or common uh, men on the streets? You can understand that uh, there is no respect or regard for anyone. People who were opportune to be within the corridor of power uh, will parade themselves, of course, as demigods. As if, uh, uh, in fact, they, if they have opportunity, they will even overthrow the Elohim. Not okay. understanding that it's very unfortunate that life, power belongs to God. Okay, but then do you think there is, what do you think the, the DSS wanted to achieve by that action? Uh, whatever may be their motive for doing that, is that doesn't stop the people for demanding for justice. Nandi County is not just uh, if, uh, it's, it's not just uh, an ordinary person. It's a notable personality across the entire nation, international uh, figure. So you shouldn't be treated with such a level of uh, uh, disregard. So he has the right to demand for justice, and uh, he has a teeming population of followers at numbering over 150 million. So you can't just, I mean, jeopardize the interests of these uh, followers who are keeping watch, who are following up the development. Of course, who uh, most of them, their patients have been exhausted. In fact, they are waiting just for the least opportunity to. to overturn the entire Nigeria states. If, uh, of course, the state will dare to play in that line. It's very unfortunate. So what I'm advocating, if the government should listen, is they should stop all these uh, uh, intimidations from different quarters. That will not help issue. You are rather making the people to believe that truly you are what people claims have alleged you, that you are bent at intimidating or killing whoever that you think that is standing on your way. I believe we are in a democratic setting and the, the democratic norms should be adhered to or strictly implemented. There are rules of law and accused is presumed innocent until proven otherwise by a competent courts of law. So what's, when the DSS become uh, the people that will pass the verdict, they are taking laws into their hands. You have no right to ask somebody to subject a uh, legal counsel for crying loud. His client had not been convicted of whatever allegation that had, was levied on against him or charges. So why should you treat even the legal counsels? Learned fellows in such manner is very, is is part, is it is a shame to the Nigerian state. It's, it's a very big shame. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Chigose, for that. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure.